Today's episode was just so much fun. My guest is Eileen Durfee. She's a health pioneer, a businesswoman, and an innovator who has reinvented a way to distribute natural healing products to protect others from toxicity. Okay, so uh, Eileen background, she was a former nuclear power plant engineer. She was very sick her whole life, and I'll let you tell that whole story. And using her kind of, uh, what would you call it, inventor brain, she just kept seeing problems. This is what I love about engineer brains. And I'll say this in the episode, so forgive the repetition, but like I lo- their, their minds are wired in such a way as to like, what is the problem and how can it be fixed? What is the problem and what's the most efficient and effective way to fix it? And let me make sure it's fixed. And, you know, so having someone like that go through her own pain of having all these health issues for so long, she finally was just like, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to find the healing modalities. And then she, on top of it, she kept making them better as anybody who has that kind of brain. I'm sure you can relate. It's just like, how can I make this better? How can I make this better? So she created a company it's called Creatrix Solutions. And it's so cool. Wait till you hear the stuff that she did and, and how she got to that place and why she changed things the way they did. We're going to be talking about anything from infrared saunas to ozone to coffee enemas, uh, so much. Don't miss the part at the end where she's talking about the S curve of the spine. That was really cool. Phototherapy, just so much cool stuff. And just hearing her experience with all of it and how it impacted her is just, it was, she's just great. You're going to love her. She's fun to listen to and just really appreciate her. And she's worked with some really incredible people since then. And yeah, she's just amazing. So let's go ahead and jump in. Here is Eileen Durfee. Okay, Eileen, I'm excited to share your story because even though it it has its specific facets, there's so many people who can relate on different levels and they don't know that things are going on with their health or like where it's coming from. So can you tell us what brings you to the show today? Just kind of share your journey in health. Well, I've been sick my whole life from the time they ripped me out of my mom with forceps. And obviously I had some fascia issues when I was in the womb because as I grew my hips were twisted and one knee hit the other one. Every time I walked or ran, it was mm. really clumsy. And then I, and, and they pretty much didn't figure out. I mean, I had leg aches all the time. They x-rayed, wow. said there was nothing wrong with me. You of know, course. so I wore special shoes. And then <laughs> I grew nine inches in three months and boy, was that painful. Wow. And, and then shortly after that, I got ran over by a car when I was walking in a parking lot. And then it really was terrible because I felt like daggers in my chest. Every time I would take a breath, wow. um, I could barely move my arms because my whole thoracic area, my spine just kind of went, you know, like a huge scoliosis curve from the floors. Wow. And wow. so, you know, I got into chiropractic care and uh, learned about different exercises that the chiropractic pretty much restored my structure was Dr. Sugar. Now he passed away in 2016, mm. but he had some really interesting things go on with the U.S. Olympic team and NFL mm. teams, which we can get into later. Uh, But the next thing that happened is I got a silver amalgam filling when I was like 20 and my health went downhill from there. It was terrible. Uh, And I ended up becoming allergic to everything. And And you probably had no idea what was going on. Like you didn't make that connection at that time. No, I didn't. You know, there was all kinds of things contributing. It's like, how many straws do you have on your camel's back? Exactly. People think that health is just like a silver bullet. Right. (laughs) It's not. I mean, I, I got toxins from my mom. I got a poor set of genes. Heck I'm related to the boy that the movie was made about the boy in the bubble with John Travolta. Really? That's actually in my family tree. Wow. So my mom had health problems her whole life. So, I mean, you know, people don't realize how much toxic metals and junk come through the placenta to the baby. And I actually just got, my mom would cut my hair and saved them in a baby book. And I sent all my baby hair off to get analyzed. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh. The toxic metals and everything were through the roof. I was just poisoned. 
Wow, you I didn't know, know they could still see it later like that. Yeah, wow. they can actually do mummy hair. <laughs> really? Wow, cool. And, okay. You know, so I did that and sure enough, yeah, that didn't help matters and then you know, just um uh, having you know, thyroid issues and adrenal issues from the stress. I'm from Washington state where, you know, the Hanford reservation is, it's the most contaminated place in the Western hemisphere of the world. Hmm. And it, during my mom's childhood years, they just released large amounts of radiation right into the atmosphere. So then when she was drinking milk, so there's more people here with thyroid disease than anywhere. Oh, wow. And so, you know, having the underactive thyroid, Mm -hmm. you know, then obviously later on, I found out that I had leaky gut because I became allergic to everything I ate. So then I would do the pulse test because, you know, an allergy test, you can, have something that's safe to eat. And then you eat that all the time and then you become allergic to it. Yep. So I had to use it, rot- it as a toxin because it's leaking into your yeah. bloodstream and it's like attack. Right. So then I went to never eating anything from the same family. Like if I'm going to eat broccoli, I don't eat a cabbage or another cruciferous for 72 hours. Right. So, I, so I did that. Then some doctor said, oh, you have candida. So they put me on niastatin and ketoconazole which, you know, that's a drug and that really doesn't fix the root. I mean, I thought all my evils, you know, cause I had psoriasis all over my body. My hair was falling out. I couldn't think I had course, chronic course. joint pain, yep. anxiety, panic attacks. Yep. Uh, you know, it, it was easier to say what was working, you know, so I I've suffered my whole life. Wow. And, you know, so I just had this underlying drive that my body, if it had what it needed, it would heal myself, you know, it it would do its job. I mean, that's what it was created for. So I had that underlying faith where I never gave up, you know, and I switched from medications to natural stuff, but I was still chasing my symptoms. Right. And right. right. Now that I know more about, you know, biology and chemistry, you know, you move one element, they all move. It's like a lot of people don't know that taking a lot of zinc will lower copper, you know, copper, but it also affects your potassium. Yeah. Or, you know, there's just things that move one way or another. And so when I found out about hair analysis, you know, I was a wreck and it was just one more thing that I was going to try, but it changed my life Mm. because I had cabinet bowls of stuff. It's like when you're so sick and you spare no expense at trying to get well, it's just one more thing that you're going to take like handfuls. You don't ever imagine that one of the things that you're taking that medicated one symptom caused another health problem. Right. And, and that's what right. I found out is, is that all of this calcium magnesium that I was taking to go to the bathroom and to sleep mm, yeah. was then displacing in my joints and causing the arthritic pain and those kinds of things that when I got on the hair analysis, I just, it's like in a month mm. of just taking a lot less, it's like I had to wean myself out of, off of stuff that I was using, you know, mm-hmm. to medicate symptoms. Cause they say, well, that's causing you know, making the root problem worse. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so then when I got on those, it's like, you didn't need chelation. Cause the body's like all of a sudden thinking it won the lottery, like, oh my gosh, you know, I can we do can- this now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so then I really started getting into detox protocols and being a former nuclear power plant engineer and seeing things in blueprint form, you know, I'm more left, left brained and I would just, you know, and I'm a gizmo woman, you know, how many people have like a garage full of gizmos that they buy and never use. Right. Well, I just use something and then would wish that it was this or that go to sleep. And I would wake up, I would see it. I would see the new invention. And so then I started patenting gizmos and just making them, you know, easier to use. Because if you have a gizmo that works and you don't use it, hey, that's no good. So so I just made sure they're non-toxic, you know, and help the body escort out all these things so we could do the body could do its transformation job. 
because every cell in the body has an enzyme binding site that requires a mineral. And mm -hmm. by design, you know, calcium in the bones, right? You know, right. and people don't realize, but selenium for the thyroid gland, the right. man's prostate is more zinc. And so when we can get the right elements there, you know, because we can restore the body's energy and, mm -hmm. you know, supporting our endocrine system and so on and so forth, then we can begin to restore health. I mean, at 60 yep. years old now, I feel better than I ever Yay. remember. I mean, Yay. you know, to be able to sleep, to wake up with energy, not to have any aches or pains in my body, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's just a process, you know, yeah. there's all kinds of things to do from getting enough sunlight in your eyes, you know, to balance your circadian rhythm, grounding, yeah. you know, we're indoors way too much. People yeah. aren't moving enough. I mean, there's just some things people can do for free that will dramatically improve their health. Yeah. But the main thing, because we can have, you know, natural light, we can have good water, we can have good food. I mean, even organic food doesn't have the mineral content that <clears throat> some nope. used two years ago. I mean, some of them have even lower than the conventional because they're not replenishing. And then the ones that are replenishing, the minerals are too big and you can't absorb them. And I love that you mention hair mineral analysis because it's one of the core tests that I do with my clients too. And it was life-changing for me also, just in terms of being incredibly magnesium deficient for me. And I didn't realize I was taking magnesium, but the form I, I was not absorbing the form that I was taking. And so when I saw that and I started using like a nano particle size mineral, it, I mean, sleep calm, just extreme calm. Cause he, I, I'm sure as you know, magnesium deficiency will create anxiety. Right. right. And I had, <laughs> was going through a ton of stress. I had been keto fasting, super exercising trauma, like, all you know, like all of this stuff I was in survival mode, not sleeping. Like it's just like magnesium depletion central and just creating <laughs> more of this anxiety. Once I got that replaced, then I had this calm, in which I could, and, and, and I love that you're talking about like the, the ratios matter, the ratio with minerals, the ratios matter. And that's what her mineral analysis provides us with is like, it's not just, oh, selenium is good. Take selenium, zinc is good. Take zinc. It's like they, the min the ratios matter. And I'm so glad you're pointing that out. And also talking about nature. Uh, it's, I went to um, a, a regenerative farm in Ohio recently. And they, oh, cool. they actually <laughs> test the mineral content in their soil. And, um, th like they went and got some conventional, uh, produce from the grocery store and tested it against theirs. And it's like some of them, like selenium, you mentioned two of them. I saw just a handful of ones. They showed me zero. They had zero selenium in them. None, you know, the sodium was way lower. Everything was lower, you know? And so like, I, I, as much as I would love to be like super hippie and like, I can just get everything from food. Like we can't now, unless you're like some regenerative enthusiast gardener, that's like <laughs> testing your soil content. It's just like, you got to check that stuff now. It's just, it, we're not getting it the way nature intended. Even the organic ones, the organic ones can be lower in some of the minerals, you know? And so yeah. I just love that you're bringing that all to light. And I, and I love that you have this engineer brain. I, lo I love engineer brains. So they're like my favorite. Cause they just, they see how things work and they like want everything to make sense. And it's just like very helpful. So mm -hmm. let's talk about this. I want to talk about, excuse me, you're like being exposed to in, in term, terms of your job. Like, how did you start to figure out what was coming in that was causing problems? You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes it's like somebody's like finds out they have mold and they're like, well, that would have been nice to know. Or they're super sensitive to EMFs and they find out there's a tower right next to it. You know, that what was that discovery process of like the things creating the problems like for you? Well, I mean, I grew up, my dad had a, a motorcycle shop and a machine and welding shop. So I had been around exhaust fumes when there was lead in the gasoline i had been wow. around all the welding fumes all that then when i went into the nuclear power plant construction phase being an inspector and auditor and engineer you know you're out in the field back then they didn't have fresh air they didn't care about the workers you wow. know and so it was you know, after I started becoming allergic, 
I, I, my lungs would close up being around anybody with perfume or anything right. with the cleaning chemicals. And, you know, now you can go to the store and buy a half a dozen different brands of non-toxic cleaning chemicals that work. But back then there wasn't anything and I had to make my own. So I had to clean up my interior environment yep. because I was just reactive, super sensitive to those things. And so mm-hmm. then I realized, I think in uh, the late 1990s that it had to be something with toxins. So then that's when I got a far infrared sauna. But at the time, I didn't know that it had high EMFs and, you know, that (laughs) kind of thing. But I was sweating a lot. I did, you know, feel better overall because I wasn't one of those people that was super sensitive to EMFs. Uh Uh, but, But I made that connection you know, probably in the nineties, uh, you know, I, I know when, um, I, in the late eighties, early nineties, when I was having my children, cause I had two boys who were 14 and a half months apart. Mm-hmm. And then my daughter, 21 mm-hmm. months later, but during that wow. time of being pregnant and having kids, I lived in a place where we were down the wind, where they sprayed pesticides on an apple orchard. And I would get so sick and reactive wow you know from that yeah Um, but I just knew that it that it was partly you know environmental I mean other people weren't having reactions but I was just super sensitive to to it now I know from my genetics that my body just does not eliminate stuff and so yeah therefore these daily practices of the daily near infrared sauna you know doing skin brushing drinking ozonated water uh you know jumping on a rebounder, exercising and uh, doing coffee enemas and doing supplements because most people are not in perfect health. You know, the first sign of an imbalance is fatigue. Yeah. And that, that means your body's got too many adaptations Yeah, and you know, it's doing the workaround and the more workarounds that you got, then the more disease symptoms you'll have. So that's like the time when people, instead of like having an energy drink or more coffee or caffeine to prop yourself up, or even those vitamin packets that like really have a lot of B vitamins or something, they're supposedly to give your energy, but you're not identifying what the problem is and how to balance it. And that's the thing, even if you were some regenerative farmer that had perfect produce, depending on the stresses or emotional trauma, somebody's going to go through, they're going to have higher needs for certain kind of Yep. things and other people. And now that I'm into genetic testing, for instance, um, I was taking melatonin and I started taking melatonin again mm. when it was known to help, you know, for combating COVID. Uh huh. And so, you know, I wasn't one of the ones that were reactive with it and I would uh-huh. sleep well, but little did I know from my genetic test and my saliva and my urine testing that that melatonin was causing my body not to make any serotonin, even though I wasn't depressed, you know, they're going, you're an anomaly. Well, it's like, I do all these daily practices, but so I stopped the melatonin. And that's the other thing is, is with my genetic mutation, collagen wasn't being metabolized properly. And it was going in and screwing up all these other ratios. So I stopped those two things did these custom creams and now my serotonin is perfect. All these amino acid ratios are perfect, but it's like, wow, we really have to look at the individual Mm -hmm. to be able to get them, you know, operating. So you're not actually causing another problem that you're having to deal with. It's Mm -hmm. like so many people are going down this rabbit hole and playing Russian roulette. and, And that's what I did for, for many years. And you know, I can never stop learning. I mean, I just, you know, continue to learn and I'm doing mm-hmm. things because my grandma lived till she was 99. Let me tell you, the last 20 years of her life were horrific. Wow. And so as I grow older, 
like, you know, I was in a car wreck. I've had to have knee surgery. And so like when I do squats and stuff like that, you know, it's like my knees will begin to ache. So, I mean, I went to Mexico and got stem cells Mm. and now I'm back from Las Vegas and I'm back home starting to work out. And, you know, I'm sitting there doing my 200 squats and it's like, normally my knees would ache. I have no knee ache. Oh, awesome. I'm glad to hear that was effective for you. (laughs) Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And anybody who's worked with you know, any of my clients listening or people who know my work well like you're speaking my language you're my kind of woman because I do the <laughs> DNA testing too and the analysis we we process that and it's it's crazy what you can find out it's like hey like you know melatonin and is a great example so like melatonin acts on the same genetic pathway as caffeine so if you're a slow metabolizer of caffeine you're going to be a slow metab- metabolizer of melatonin and I'm curious about your serotonin connection because like which gene you're testing for that. I don't know if you know off the top of your head. I don't know off the top you know, of my okay. head. I like, was tested for 86 of them and there's like about 30 of them that I have. Okay. You know? <laughs> okay. Yeah. And sometimes you have to correlate different things, but um, you know, it's like, it's so cool to find that out. And it, it, a lot of, a lot of this people know intuitively, like when I get a slow metabolizer of caffeine, for example, they will always, almost always say, oh, I don't drink caffeine. <laughs> like they just, they're like, I don't, they don't like the way it makes them feel. And then I get a fast metabolizer and they're like, I can crank through that crap. Like nobody's business. I'm like, I know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then the normal ones are kind of like, yeah, I pretty much don't have it after noon or two. It's, it's like, they already kind of know that about themselves. Right. But then when you find out things like that, like, well, melatonin also. So that's why you're waking up feeling groggy and it's not really kicking in fast because you're a slow metabolizer. But so I like, actually no. handle caffeine just fine. And I never woke up groggy from the melatonin. So you're probably a fast metabolizer, but then there's the serotonin connection. And, and, and we know that they're precursors. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, I love it. And it's so interesting because every mutation, your body can react four different ways. So that we can't test to know whether it's like producing toxic stuff where it's not working right. at all, or it's just working slower, or it's working faster. You know, you know, there's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot. You have still to can't guess. <laughs> yeah. I always think about that. Like with like B, um, B six. Oh, that like yeah. you can't know if it's metabolizing into the active form P5P in your liver. So you have to look at liver, you know. But anyway, my point is like I love that you're talking about individualized medicine because like people ask yeah. me all the time, what supplements do you take? And I'm like, uh uh-uh. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't <laughs> right. matter for you what I take. <laughs> right, I take stuff exactly. based off my blood, my DNA, my hair mineral analysis, my gut test, you know? So I love that you're doing that. Okay. So we, you talked about a bunch of things that you're doing, right? Like you did that, you did like, the infrared sauna and coffee enemas and ozone generators. And, you know, and we'll talk about if you guys, like, I want to kind of get into create creatrix solutions and how this path went for you. What were the things that you were like, holy crap, that completely changed my life. You said hair mineral analysis was a big one for you, like yeah. a game changer. What were the, the biggest game changers okay. for you personally? Switching the type of sauna to an incandescent bulb heat lamp sauna. Wow. That was huge. Cause I was taking a daily sauna and I was told by a doctor that, no, no, you got to go with near infrared only. Well, there's saunas that have little tiny led lights that yeah. that now they can say it has near infrared but it's really not you know therapeutic levels and uh-huh. things like that and so i got uh some light panels with heat lamp bulbs and day one i didn't sweat as much day two i sweat more day three i was just sweating like crazy but i had this overall energetic clean, well-being feeling that I never have experienced in my life. Mm, And at this time, my son was at the University of Washington doing biology and chemistry. And I says, what is this thing about near infrared? So he sent me a whole bunch of stuff to read. And he says, oh yeah, mom, you know, that's why we have photosynthesis on earth. And, you know, it'll just shine the light on your skin and your your mitochondria will produce ATP instead of be having to eat food and digest it. You know, if you can do get a sauna, and do all of it in one, you know, why waste yeah. your time doing anything else? So then yeah. of course the saunas, the near infrared saunas that were on the market in incandescent bulbs, first of all, they use cotton canvas. So there was no R value. So you could never really get it hot enough to really super mm-hmm. sweat. Mm. And then most 
cotton is GMO ready. So <laughs> yeah. really you have Ugh. pesticide in no. the fiber that are, <laughs> that are sub volatile organic compounds. But when you oh, look at man. the chemistry of it, when you heat it up, then they become more carcinogenic, right. the volatile organic compounds. So it's like, of course I didn't want to have a right. non-organic tent. And I didn't like the fact that, you know, it wouldn't get hot and that you had to preheat it. So then I'm sitting there going, okay, light frequencies, light travels at the speed of light. Let's just don't let it leave. So that's when I got the utility patent on the Sonifix. It has R12 radiant panels where the light can't leave. So it's like every second you're in there, it maximizes the phototherapy. So then with that little add on, that was like sweating twice as much in half the time and feeling energized. Nice. And so that was the biggest game changer. That's the biggest health tool, mm. you know, for me. Awesome. And then the next biggest, uh, well, before I got into saunas, I got into ozonated water. Because, mm. you know, when I thought I had candida, not understanding that it was exhausted adrenal glands that couldn't keep copper bound to a protein to make it my antifungal naturally in my body. Mm. So I was taking all these antifungals and it would mutate against it. So then when I learned about ozonated water doing it on an empty stomach, it was acting like an antifungal for me, nice. but then the candida couldn't mutate against it. So that was a huge nice. game changer bringing ozone, you know, into my, you know, daily routine and, and nice. also cleaning the food. Cause it's like, again, taking the straws off the camel's back, right. you know, we don't want to be ingesting parasite larvae for it to have its life cycle in our body. Or if our immune system has to fight off extra salmonella or E. coli mm -hmm. or listeria, mm -hmm. we can clean that up ahead of time with our food and make it safe. So mm -hmm. that I think was, was huge. And so yeah, hair analysis, saunas. Oh, but coffee enemas. Oh my gosh. I tell you what, that, I mean, actually, if somebody asked me, Eileen, I'm only going to do one thing for my health, what would it be? I'd say do a daily coffee enema. Really? That's how much and how powerful that is, because I'll have clients that come in, get their hair analysis, all that. I always yeah. give them the two week coffee enema challenge. And this one guy, he had like a laundry list of symptoms. He was on various medications for sleep, um, anxiety, just allergies, all kinds of stuff. And so they came back after their test results. And that guy, 80% of his problems were gone. All really? he did was do a daily coffee enema. Wow. And I admit this is not something that I have ventured into. I mean, I obviously I hear people talking about it all the time, especially in the detox world. And it's probably just because I haven't had gut issues or like toxic, like it just, it just hasn't been something that's come into my life. So it's interesting to hear your perspectives on it. That's crazy. This, so you feel like that is I'm the number sorry, one thing I've, that helped you. Forgot to. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> get this phone off. So yeah, with, um, the coffee enema that, that was wow. huge because initially when I, especially when I had to go up all that excess magnesium and calcium that were screwing other stuff up, you know, oh, right. and with the underactive thyroid, you know, right. it was tended towards constipation. Totally. So that just really worked well for me. So you don't have that auto intoxication and, you know, a lot of, a lot of people have that problem. Right. And it's better to use the right minerals to balance your chemistry and utilize the coffee enema. But my favorite story is about Hitler's army when they were cut off from supplies. They were operating on soldiers without pain meds or everything. And the doctor always ordered a plain water enema. Then one nurse started putting leftover coffee from the pot in the enema bucket. Really? And a strange thing happened. Their pain went down dramatically, so much so that three universities in Europe studied the reason why. Wow. They were put in coffee, water, and rats and figuring out that in 12 minutes, all the caffeine and palmitic acid had gone out of the rectal area, up the portal vein, and stimulated the bile duct so it 
increase wow. bile production dramatically and glutathione by 600%. Really? It turns wow, on enzyme systems and all kinds of stuff. And of course, wow. then, you know, you, you have to lay down and then you don't have bowel control and you get up, fecal water goes everywhere. It's like a mess. A lot of, and then people's backs and their knees. And I had this one client who said, I'm going to do them, but he like had this bag and he rolled it standing up. So then that got me the idea. I just need to stand up, no mess, coffee, enema fix with a pump that you can take a shower. Then you mm. can do your fascia blasting, whatever you're doing, you know, in your shower, mm. conditioning your hair. And then we need to eliminate, just go sit down on the toilet. I mean, it's just like. This is so your gizmo brain, your, your gizmo brain in action. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Interesting. I did not know that about the bile and the glutathione production. That's, I mean, of course, if you're, especially if you're toxic, you got a lot of toxins, like that's going to be freaking huge. Especially everybody on the DNA who is a slow metabolizer yeah. of, you know, the poisons and toxins. Right. They that don't will just be a well. game changer for them that, that their health yeah. what they'll feel like you know people go well, Eileen how do you have time to do this that and everything every day I go well it turns me into superwoman wow. <laughs> where I've got all this energy and no pain and it wow. makes me feel and look younger I mean if you look at videos of me 10 years ago and look at me now I know you look so healthy I'm like how did she ever have health you're like radiating if you guys are listening on audio like you look so young and glowing and it's like what you had health problems <laughs> like that's shocking the body's ability to heal is really incredible then because you look like way younger than you are so that's super yeah cool. and I we make our own skincare line too mm. and so um that was the real dramatic uh change is putting that nutrition on you know because it's like this transdermal nutrition mm. it's big you know awesome. and so we use you know the animal fats with organic oils Ooh, and things nice. and you know, it's like making the light bulb. We really actually have natural deodorant that works and <laughs> things that this Hard one client had all these broke, broke, broken red blood vessels on her skin. And she used our anti-aging toner and our anti-aging lotion. And, and she's had them for years and tried everything under the sun. And they're all gone now. Wow. She emailed pictures and said, I had permission to use them. So now I can get those before and after on the website, but yeah. Wow. Cool. So okay, everything so is, a is everything on my website is someone I knew or in my family or myself cool. had a problem and we found the solution that's not Love causing it. another problem. Cause it's like, how many times can you yeah. have something like even hair products? You know, it's like, I have a tendency to have really kinky hair. So, I mean, you can put a lot of stuff on your hair to, to manage it. That's like, there's this yuck app, you know, where you can scan yeah. labels yeah. to figure out what's toxic. And it's like, yeah, the stuff that works is like really bad for you, but you know, so always having that less toxic aspect because yes. women don't know it, but between all your body care products and household cleaners, they're getting like 500 chemicals. I know. It's so day. bad. I know. I know. Once you clean that up, it's like, it's almost hard to even look at that stuff. It's just like, N no, like, why would <laughs> I, you know, or like your laundry, do I just can't, I could not, I can't do it. I love the earth too much. I love myself too much. I love my kids too much. Like, I just can't feel good about doing that to us or the planet, you know, <laughs> going into the waterways and the water system too. Like, oh, no, yeah. <laughs> and it's not necessary. And a lot of times it's less good. It's less effective. Like when you switch to natural skincare products, you're like, wow, this whole thing was a hoax. This whole thing was a hoax. All this chemical crap <laughs> sucks. It's not even good. You know, we just had somebody talking about beauty products like a couple of weeks ago on the show. So, okay, let's talk about this. I love this because I love engineer brains. I love gizmo brains. Okay. So creatrixsolutions.com, by the way, is her website. Okay. So like, what did you, did you start with the infrared? How did this process go for you? You were like a nuclear power plant engineer. Yeah. And like, like, what did this, tell us how this process went. So my first invention was the Sonifix lamp. Okay, cool. And then we were just using small closets and people kept on asking me for tents. Yeah. And so that's when I researched and I came up with one that was just really four foot by four foot by five foot. You had to crawl in and sit down. Yeah. Then I had this really short lady that 
flip the sauna and put the floor against the wall and lay diagonal because she wanted to lay down and take a sauna. So then it's like, oh my gosh, I can make a convertible, like a little transformer. I could give yeah. them different baskets and I could make it bigger <laughs> and I could thicken the, the panels so it would heat up enough. And so I have to thank the guy who stood up and rolled his bag. <laughs> That's what inspired me to do the pump enema fix. And this yeah. lady who flipped the tent, laid diagonal, she inspired me to create the convertible tent. Then I had uh, Jen Bodner from Yoga Digest. She had two of the smaller tents and she zipped them together. Oh, wow. So she could do some yoga. She goes, oh, but if it was only this wide and this tall. So that's how we got the hot yoga studio. Then I have major league baseball players and uh, UFC fighters and, um, you know, NFL players that are too tall. They can't do it. So then I made the yoga height extension kit for 13 inches. So even if you're six foot one, you can completely raise your arms up. And, you know, and take a sauna. So it's like out of those things, you know, my my engineer brain. But the first one was the sauna. Then I got tired of buying ozone generators every year because they put crappy generators in there that that maybe have a 500 hour rating. So, Mm -hmm. you know, like you use them every day. So then. Right you'd be throwing them away and buying a new one. And so I got one and um, had it made where it had an 8,000 hour generator in it plus an 800 milligram per hour instead of the 200, like the soda is a 200 milligram per hour. So, so I made it better to last longer. And then, you know, a lot of people don't realize that breathing ozone gas permanently damages lung tissues. You can't mm-hmm. be inhaling over 0.02 part per million. Mm-hmm. And so I bought that science glass beaker with the bubbler from some company in Canada. And it was like $275 and it had this PVC pipe sticking over here. And it's just, I felt like I was going to break it. And the diffuser in that thing was so crappy because I had my meter to measure how much dissolved ozone and you couldn't even get it to a decent amount. So then I came up with something super simple, a glass jar with a filter cap that has the pellets in here. You know, you can hook it to any ozone generator. It goes down up there and there's holes up there. So then it completely degasses 100% of the ozone in the air and it's safe. And it'll work on any ozone generator. And so, and that's just sure a lot easier to carry around than that other contraption. And I use a stainless steel uh, medical grade uh, diffuser with pores that are like, I have one that's 0.5 part uh, milligrams, but this one is the 50 to 60. So it like will ozonate this full glass of water in like three minutes. Wow. I mean, it'll be totally saturate the water with the ozone. So um, it's just, you know, one thing after another, how to make it easier yeah. to protect us. Oh, right. and then I was on an airplane and I had a lucid dream because I wasn't asleep, but I wasn't awake. Right. And I saw this little gizmo. Oh, wow. On my tray table. <laughs> and it was hooked to a power bank like you charge your phone from. And everyone else was coughing and getting sick but me. Now, I had an air purifier ozone generator combination that was plasma. And so I got with my engineer. I says, it has to look like this. It has to work on a battery pack. It has to be very light and, you know, portable. And so we went through that development process. And now, uh, so it makes 4,550,000 negative ions to 1 million. Oh, okay. So that's what I'm not familiar with plasma air purifiers. Plasma for negative ions. Is a combination of negative ions and positive. And I said that in reverse. Okay. It's 19,100,000 negative ions to 4,550,000 positive. Okay. Like the plasma sharp cluster delivers 15,000 negative ions because their circuit 
delivers equal positive and negative. And if they go any higher, it makes too much toxic ozone. Okay. So these other plasma generators are different than mine. I had more negative than positive. So it gets the reactive cloud. So it's super good at getting rid of volatile organic compounds and benzenes and formaldehydes and, you know, all this kind yeah. of stuff, dust particles and even bacteria. But I had people telling me, Eileen, I was having an asthma attack and I had the breeze safe at my desk and I just had my inhaler out and I just started breathing over the, the breeze safe and my, and I didn't have to use my inhaler. Interesting. So now I got like a whole family of asthmatics. They bought 12 of them and they're all hmm. using this instead of their inhalers and they're taking it with them, like in a cross body purse because it has a yeah. battery pack. Right. And so I sent it off to the lab to find out what's going on. Is it oxygen? What what is going on? Because we yeah. know it's negative ions and it's clean air, right? And it increases background oxygen levels seventy to one hundred eighteen percent. Now that was by accident. Oh wow! And so if you look at the reviews on the website, there's people with you know low oxygen because of all their lung yeah. issues and stuff yeah. going from eighty eight to ninety two, ninety three. They just sleep with it in wow. their bed. Now I originally thought about it to clean up the toxic humidified sauna sweat, because, Mm -hmm. you know, there's Mm -hmm. all the European studies that say, you know, when you exercise and sweat, that sympathetic dominance, that's more mineral loss where sauna Mm -hmm. sweat is more toxins and Mm -hmm. then it gets humid in there. So then we're rebreathing it. And I'm always concerned Mm -hmm. about that. So, totally. so then that cleans it up. But if you inhale 20,000 negative ions per cubic centimeter, that's the size of a sugar cube, Mm -hmm. your rectal temperature won't go down. Then your skin surface temperature will be more. You will sweat twice as much. Hmm. And even after you get out of the sauna, your rectal temperature will continue to rise. This is if you inhale those negative ions. And what do we do? We threw the baby out with the bathwater. We went from the standard with the rocks, pouring the water over the rocks, release negative ions into the air. As long as the metals, Mm because there's also a European study on classifying certain heaters because depending right. on how they were built, some of them weren't, weren't releasing negative ions. They were releasing positive ions and people in those saunas were more exhausted. Oh, wow. And so the, the breeze safe is also a sauna ion generator that you cool. can keep in there. You're right. Very then my, cool. My son during college, whenever I would go over there you know, his roommates were into these Glade Airwick plug-in toxic fume, you know, totally. they, they were, they're not air cleaners. I mean, chemical, if you actually, they're perfume, chemical, they're, perfume they're chemical diffusers. They, yeah. <laughs> actually the ingredients on the health and human services website lists them as carcinogenic. And so I got with my son and I, I built this. I'm looking to see if I have a show and tell of one of them around here. <laughs> but a little tiny thing, the same size that you mm-hmm. plug in and it uses carbon fiber, carbon fiber tips impregnated with some metal. So it makes negative ions, only 32,000, you know, so it doesn't make oxygen. That's it has cool. it has some good effects with cleaning up volatile organic compounds, but what it shines at is this little gizmo. I put it in a chamber and tested it. In 24 hours, it gets rid of 99.9% of pathogens in the air. So little plugins, like little plug-in negative ion generators. Yeah. That's on your website. It, I'm yeah. Gonna, oh, oh, here it is. Here it is. I, that's I, cool. I do have one. What are they called? What do you call them? Ionic refresher. <laughs> that is those, awesome. There's those little, uh, you know, carbon fiber tips. Yes. And all you got to do is wipe it down, you know, and clean around the wall. It's like my son had one that a cat litter box in this small closet and had an outlet in there. And, you know, so I gave him this and a breeze safe so it would keep the odor yeah. down. And so he calls me out. He goes, Mom, there's something wrong. I'm going, what? He says, the wall is totally black. Did the thing catch on fire? And I says, no, I said, son, son, take a rag. Have you been wiping down the wall once a month? He says, no. I said, that's collecting the dark dirt particles and it's blackened your wall. So it's like, so then he, yeah, he cleaned the wall and it all wow, came off. Wow, interesting. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, I love negative ion. I'm all about that. Like, I mean, if you have, if you guys are listening and you haven't experienced that, like just get one, try some sort of negative ion generator, try hers. You've got all different options here. It you'll notice, I keep one like right by me, you know, I have one currently, but like it's, it's, it, it's noticeable. And if you're a nature lover, if you've ever been walking by like a waterfall area or running water and you've noticed the insane mood boost. And now of course there's like multiple facets to that also just like observing nature and grounding and all of that. But like that mood boost, that's a lot of it. That mood boost you get where you're just all of a sudden you can be the grumpiest person in the world. And they're just like talking your ear off about blah, 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 blah. Like that's it. That's what it feels like, you know, when you get more negative ions in your life. So I love that and you created reason- those. And the reason why, you know, because I always look at the reason why do we have a right. problem. Right. And that is we're indoors and we have heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. That duct work, the act of pulling the air through the cold air return and circulating, because you're going to have so many changes per hour in your system, uh, it actually strips negative ions out of the air. Really? And our body, just like it wow. needs so much water, so much oxygen to survive, or it goes into adaptation, you need so many, uh, you know, negative ions per cubic centimeter to have bodily functions. Yeah. And when you don't have those, then you're going to feel fatigued. WebMD says that if you get enough negative ions, it's more effective than an antidepressant. So when you're talking about mood, totally, and people don't realize this, this, these computer screens in front of me are emitting poisonous positive ions. So whatever negative ions are in the air that my HVA system hasn't stripped out is exchanging and negating those. And so you have to have, I know, I know these devices that are replenishing, you know, these ions so that your body can run efficiently without having to go into adaptation mode. I know I sometimes, you know, like I appreciate the sentiment, but people are like, Oh no, you don't need any of that stuff. And I'm like, we don't, do you live in nature? Do you live in like, do you live in a cave and you're like walking around all outside and you're like fishing and like for your own food and like, no, you don't even come close to living like that. And like, just your great example about your air ducts stripping negative ions. It's like, we don't live in a natural environment. So any this to me, biohacking, which a lot of this is biohacking in my opinion, it's just, how do we recreate? I'm, I'm going to stay living in my climate controlled box. I like it here. I'm not going to yeah. go live outside of my yard, you know? Um, but like, it's like, how do I recreate what I would be getting in nature in my modern lifestyle. I find these things paramount. That's why I'm all about them too, you know? And it's like, when, once you know that, I think, cause I don't know if you find, I find people are like, Oh, do you really need that? Do you really need that? And it's like, well, let me explain actually. Yeah. You're like missing some really basic stuff that your body needs to thrive. And then on top of it, you're t- toppling. Like imagine, Oh my gosh, it makes me cringe. Just to think about it. Imagine like working in an environment that has no natural light has like horrible, like those business lights, you know, you're in there all day and then you're just eating like soda and Cheetos and like fast food (laughs) and then like going home at night and like it's dark and you watch TV till one in the morning and eat more crap. And then, oh my gosh, like uh, people do that. (laughs) I know. And I'm just like, you gotta be so sad. Like that would be, make you so sad, you know? So anyway, okay guys, um, creatrix solution. So it's like, create tricks with an X and you guys can follow also on Instagram. It's create solutions, um, at create solutions on Instagram or create solutions.com. Go check out all of your, her gadgets. Eileen, I love, I, I can't, I can't wait for my, the my most son is kind exciting. of brain too. And I can't wait for him to see all the stuff he, cause he gets all excited about gizmos and creating cool stuff too. <laughs> Sorry. What were you going to say? My most exciting passion is the spine, giving people the S-shaped spine. I was in the airport and had a four-hour layover. So I started like trying to find a Waldo. You know, who has an S-shaped spine? Who doesn't have tight muscles and pain? In four hours, I found two people. It is epidemic and people don't realize that the nerves coming out between the vertebrae, if you don't have the right shape, are being impinged. So the organs, no matter how you eat, you know, or all this house stuff that you're doing, 
is they will not work at optimal levels. And For then sure. the body begins because when the postural muscles fail, the long muscles like the hamstrings will begin to be tight, you know, yeah. the low back continue to be tight to keep your, with your head is forward. Totally. Then the body begins depositing calcium on the, the front side of the vertebrae to kind of like reduce the distance so that the muscles don't have to strain as much. And, you know, when we're born, we're C shape, but look at the old people, they're like bent over. Right. And and so we've got to look for the biohacking community. And I don't see anybody doing it is to get the S shaped spine. And I have five patented products. There's, there's five, five steps to get the S shaped spine. And I work with professional athletes I was just with Jacob Johnson, the fullback from the Las Vegas Raiders. I had him bend over at the hips, had my yardstick, had him turn his head both ways. Ten reps. We only did four of the five movements. He actually increased eight inches in reach. His hamstrings were then were totally loose. And then he could turn his head, rotate it two inches more in either direction. And when he did all the exercises, his spine was popping and cracking and the bones were actually because of the groove and the equipment. It's like a train on a train track. It puts it in a better location. It hydrates the discs, but that's a huge aspect that nobody's talking about. That would be a whole show just in itself. Wow. Are you saying this is like a, it's a process or a device that you've created? Well, here's the neck shaper. So if you guys aren't, Oh, that's the Instead neck of shaper the thing. Iron I was going to ask you about neck, that. The iron neck does not put a curve in the back. In, okay. in the neck. You got to get the curve. If you're already, you know, forward head posture, just yeah. strengthening the muscles might keep it from spasming as much. Uh-huh. But I mean, we got to get that curve in the neck, you know. And it, it so is- for people who are listening on audio, explain what you are showing at the best that you can. Uh, it's it's like a face piece with a bar. So uh-huh. you look up to the ceiling. And then you put pressure on your face as it's chin down. It's like you not, if you agree with somebody and you're nodding yeah. in your spine, that's cervical bone five. So uh-huh. C5, that's all the uh-huh. exercise is, is putting resistance to chin down, then relaxing and then pushing back because yeah. most people's head is not over their pelvis. Totally. So when you do that, your low back muscles that are, that are tight and spasming because your head's too far forward, go completely loose. And so you can do this with weight, you can put weights on it. We have these rolls that have a special groove. All foam rollers out there crunch the spinous, all of them. Mine has a patented groove, so the spinous floats, and then your body weight right. is catching the edge of the cushion. Yeah, that's super so, nice. So it's actually segmental traction with your own body weight, and you lay right. there flat for 20 minutes, you know, then you got no gravity, keeping your muscles tight and they loosen up and you hear your bones crack just laying over the rolls. It's phenomenal. Wow. Yeah. That's super nice with the groove and you can get those on your website as well. Yes. I'm looking and at then those, we so, have yeah. the, the big one, the backtrack. So actually, even if you have ribs out, it'll hmm. put your ribs in place. Uh, there's no other foam roller out there that does that. Actually, I have chiropractors using it now. And yeah, I was wondering if you're getting those in chiropractor or yes, physical yes. therapist offices because they would be, I'm sure, all about that. You know, like the closest thing that I've ever seen is just like those little, the two balls. You know, the peanut thing. Or yeah. the, I mean, when I started as a trainer, I made one with literally like two tennis balls and masking tape, <laughs> <laughs> right. trying to get that groove in the middle. So it's nice that you've. I mean, that's like a way better curvature because it comes in a little closer. So yeah, that's really nice. And then really the nice. problem with the standard setup is you can, you create posterior shear. So we have like, for instance, you know, everything about muscle development is having absolute tension on those muscles you want to work. Right. Uh-huh. And so we can, if you're, if you're going to move a, a big object, like a boulder and you have a long bar, you put a fulcrum, at the bottom and you can use a hundred pounds of force and mathematically it'll move 500. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we put the body because it's like a lever. We arch over this cushion, like Uh sit up your butts here and your chest goes back over here. Uh Then you put weight on top of the body, the chest to create leverage. So this 
like has the external obliques completely tight under tension. Right. And, you ha- and, and so it's like 500 to 100. So it's, it's working those muscles. And then the same thing with a, with a pelvic tilt. And this with the leverages. And guys, you're going to have to watch on YouTube to like click over if you're listening on audio so you can see she's got like a full on like freaking spine demo going on here. <laughs> but basically what you've got is like, it's like a, like a mound kind of that the spine yeah. is going to, you're going to lay back on. Okay. Yeah. So Think about a sleeping bag rolled up yeah. you know, and you like arching over it instead of an exercise ball, because that's the wrong curvature for the low back. Right. So basically, if you hold your body taunt and you do this pelvic tilt and you put weight on your iliac, it actually creates because of the direction of muscle pull and the leverage, it shears back L5 on L4. Now, Luke Rockhold, UFC fighter, had that herniated disc. Joe uh-huh. Rogan wanted him to go get surgery. In two weeks with that power cushion doing that exercise, as we eliminated it. Really? Wow. Yes. And it develops the rectus. Put right. an absolute tension on that. And, and, and so it's like you can get, as long as your spine is not fused naturally or surgically, we can get you the S-shaped spine wow. with all this equipment. And then there's the last one with all these rolls. It's like there's five different diameters and three different densities. You know, it's your, after you're 18, your body doesn't put direct nourishment to, to increase the size of your disc or right, the right. ossification and the density of your yep. bone. It's done and it's relying on nutrition getting in there from you having the S-shaped spine because then it's like a shock absorber. So then each disc gets pumped, you know, each disc gets pumped. And so that's what brings in the hydration and the nutrition. And so when you don't have that, then it's more compression. Right, right. Your forces are reversed and so then your discs are in degeneration. And so what we, and then they're like a dried out kitchen, hard sponge. So we do this back twist, which I have instructions on how to do that on the, the website. And that gets the blood flowing and it changes nice. the discs to a gel. Then you lay over those rolls and then gravity lets go mm. and you hear your bones crack, just laying there. <laughs> wow so it's a five-step process oh man i'm definitely checking that out that is awesome <laughs> have you had anybody with um sciatica use this yet yes yes have they that, seen improvement? i've had I've anything had a- to get that exactly what you're talking about because like it's so hard to get uh nutrients delivered to certain areas like your your disc your tendons your ligaments you know so like it's posture we had another chiropractor we had a chiropractor come on talk about this she's like you're making everything harder on your body when you're you don't have the cry- correct spinal posture because you just that's the, like your whole energy system all of your nervous system is flowing through there and you're just compressing it and limiting everything and that goes to your organs your brain you know so i love that you got on this we need a nickname an ex- for you you're like here's the an ex- example you know l3 that's your yeah. lumbar disc yeah. three if your head is in neutral posture where it should be it's the muscle exertion is 25 pounds per second huh you move one inch forward and it goes to 200 pounds a second holy smokes and most people are more than one inch right wow it, it's it's huge it's, it's huge, huge. Okay. Okay. Your nickname is the problem solver. That's your new nickname. The health problem solver. <laughs> I love it. That's why I love engineer brains. Cause they're like, wait, there's a problem. Why would you not just fix that? Let's fix it. <laughs> so, wow. I'm, you know, it's just like everybody, it's like, it's like, I'm sorry, but I'm also not sorry that you had to go through all of that stuff because look, it was like clearly part of your purpose, you know, to yes. be able to bring so much goodness to the world. So Thank you for doing what you've done. Thanks for shifting careers and like taking all of that brilliant engineer in, inventor brain into the health world because we need it. So thank you so much. And um, oh, we yeah. will we'll link all this up in the show notes, guys. CreatrixSolutions.com. Eileen, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. 